Good evening, everyone. Evening, everybody. Now, we don't normally start the vlog at eight o'clock at night, but we've had a bit of a drama. We have had a bit of a drama, but the day didn't start out that way. John's feeling much better after he's bumped to his head, so we started to make our way towards Bergen. And we've had an incredible drive here so far. We've been through valleys and mountain passes and this like magical tundra landscape where there was whirling winds whipping the snow and buried houses and waterfalls. Honestly, it felt like I was in a living Christmas card all day. But we got about an hour and a half from Bergen and the van started getting a bit of a bit of a lack of power going up hills and things like that. And the engine management lights come on. So I've had a look at it. I tried to clear the code by taking the battery lead off and everything like that, but it just comes straight back on. So the only thing we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to find a garage. But the worst thing is, is 26th of December. So we're gonna have to find somewhere that's open that they can look at it and whether they'll have the parts. So, but the way we see it is it could always be worse. Mm -hmm. Could have broken down in one of the 11 kilometer long tunnels we're in today or on a mountain pass with icy roads, yeah. broken down in a town that actually has some service stations, so. It just doesn't help that it's probably the most expensive place you could break down, so in Norway, but, uh, but oh well, like I say, <laughs> as long as they can fit us in tomorrow. Hey, snacker doing glass tug? A little bit. A little bit, thank you so much. I'll call you at nine, okay. Uh, yes, and I, I have to look at uh, how much work we have and uh, like thing like that. Okay. I... okay. Yes. Thank you so much. Oh, okay. okay. Bye bye. Bye. Looks like we're going for plan B. We're going to have to go see him. So we've had a ring round and of the four garages that are in this town, there's only one open uh, during the holidays and that's the one that's open at nine. So I've just put a, a post on Instagram, see if there's any sprinter techs out there and I've had a few replies. So I'm gonna give them a go. And if not, we're just gonna have to wait till nine until this place opens. Cross your fingers. Yeah. Well, I can definitely think of worse places to be stuck. This is one thing I didn't want to get out on this holiday. The old toolbox. At least it's well organised. Yeah, go on, Jonna. So somebody messaged me and said that the mass airflow sensor has gone these quite a lot. So I've removed it, cleaned it all up, put it back on and given it a go. And then if that doesn't work, I'm going to try unplugging it and see what happens there. So see how it goes. We got some power boys. So fingers crossed it's all good anyway. So we're going to head towards Bergen because if anything does go wrong, well, they've got more garages over there and hopefully we can be more likely to get parts anyway. So. Let's show you the beautiful scenery along the way. Again, and the old girl still going strong. Poor Neil Sainz be there. But I've got a fun fact for you. Did you know that Norway is home to the world's longest road tunnel? It's 24.5 kilometres long. And we've not been through that, but we've been through some pretty long ones. And what's brilliant about it is you go through them and it's like one scene, and because you're in there for so long, you forget what it's like. And then you come out the other side and it's totally different. And Jess summed it up brilliant. She said, it's like living in a snow globe. The old girls made it to Bergen. Let's go have a look around. So a bit of information for you about Bergen. Bergen is actually Norway's second largest city, but it used to be the capital of Norway, and it's surrounded by seven mountains and seven fjords. And for my information about Bergen, because I am doing information too, remember? John's yeah. Tours. Um, but it's not about the place, it's about the tools, Bergen tools. Makes sense. <laughs> so the German manufacturer, you might have noticed you can't get hold of them anymore. That's because they've been taken over by the tool company US Pro. So if you ever buy any US Pro tools, know that they might be Bergen too. Okay, but from Germany, not Norway. Yeah. Okay, fascinating. cold when the ducks are sitting on the lake instead of in the lake. I'm liking this shop look. Upgrading humans since 2004. 
I think they need a shop like this in England. So this part of Bergen is called Brygen and it's a UNESCO heritage listed area filled with all of these incredible harbour side buildings because Bergen came into being as a harbour side town. But you'll notice with a lot of the buildings that they're a bit wonky and that's because in 1944 a Dutch munitions ship came into the harbour during World War II but it blew up and it blew all of the roofs off the buildings and affected the foundations so they're all a bit on the wonk. We've got a traditional hot dog to try, it comes with lingonberry sauce, mustard and fried onions. Should we give it a go? Mm. So Bergen's okay anyway. It is nice, but I don't think we can give it a fair assessment because it's a grim, grey old day. And even the most beautiful place in the world doesn't really sparkle on a day like today. I think the other thing as well is like, we've had our buzzes for the day. Cause yeah. you can't get like a constant day of buzz. And uh, the van being fixed, that was a big one. Absolutely. And then the drive here, honestly, felt like we were driving through a winter wonderland. Like when, when something's that magical and you come to something that's a bit grim and a bit grey, it just doesn't really uh, yeah. shine. But the old buildings were nice anyway. They were beautiful. So we've got some more driving to do, but it's going to be in the dark, so unless we see anything special, we'll see you in the morning. Good morning everyone. So like usual, we're waiting on Jess, but we found a beautiful little spot last night, right in this little woods, and there's a ski resort at the top as well. So amazing little park up. But two things we were hoping to see when we came here was plenty of snow and plenty of wildlife. Well, we've got all the snow, but unfortunately we haven't seen any wildlife. But when I got up this morning, there's loads of little tracks about. So yeah, hopefully we're gonna see some soon. So I just went in to hurry her up, and guess what I got? A lot of this. So I think it's about time the general found out what it was like to be on the front lines. It's about time. Sick of you rushing me all the time. It's so frustrating. You need to make sure you're happy with that shot. I think that's what you call a victory. So after that cowardly ambush, <laughs> he's told me I can get one free shot and he's not going to move. So let's see if he's a man of his word. I won't move, don't you worry about that. We'll see. Get you, there. you won't hit me, that's why I don't care. Get there. Just not in the face. Not that close. Get back. Don't get me in the face. Get ready. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing as John started the day with some silliness, I thought we'd better continue it and I brought us to the longest toboggan run in all of Norway, which I'm so excited to do. But what I'm not excited to do is to share a cable car with him all the way to the top, because last time he got it rocking and terrified the life out of me. Right, promise me you're going to behave yourself. Can't make that promise, I'm afraid. Oh, God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Look at this little beauty, the old track snowblower. And I didn't know how these work, so I've just been checking out how they work. So come around here, Jess. 
So they've got these blades at the front, and what it looks like they do is they mulch up the snow and the ice, and then there's another blade at the back, which then throws it up this chute here, and obviously that's where it blows it out. But brilliant little bit of kit. We're ready to rumble, but before we do, let's show you these scenes, because they are epic. But I'll tell you what, this is absolutely brilliant. Brilliant, but deadly. There's no brakes. It's 10 metres wide and 8 kilometres long, the whole thing down. And there's nobody here either, so we can do whatever we want. But you can even stop halfway down in that. And just, like, the scenes behind as you go all the way down, it's just incredible, isn't Unreal, it? Unreal, innit? So we have to pick up the speed, though. No, I've told him already, it's to <laughs> slow down. Let's go. Pick your feet up. No, I'm breaking it. There is pick a your feet up. up. <laughs> oh my god, John! Oh my god! Oh my god, this is a funny turn! That's a bloody sheer drop! Right, straight! Go, go, go! You've got to hit one, John! Well, now for the best bit, because the descent gets steep. It's been nice knowing you, everybody. <laughs> John, no slow down! <laughs> my feet are down, my feet are down! Put your feet up! John, I'm going to die! Put your feet up! <laughs> 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 we're all right. we're all, oh my god! Oh Slow my. down, Jess. Break, 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 break. That was brilliant. Jump, we're going to crash. <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you what, that's some of the most fun I've ever had. <laughs> if I think it's like the thrill is added to by the fact that there's like a sheer drop off. But we've seen some people up here with some proper sleds yeah. though, with like brakes either side as that. We need to get one of them. They look brilliant. The nice bit is as well, there's some like real steady bits so you can just like cruise on down. Nice little sippy bit here, very relaxing, unlike John's previous ante. But we're coming up to a hill, what we like to see. Woo! Pick your feet up! <laughs> we nearly went over there. <laughs> oh, look at this, Jess. <gasps> look at that. Oh my goodness. You've got to stop and take a picture of this. So we've seen these ice falls everywhere driving around Norway and they are absolutely breathtaking. Sometimes they're like absolutely massive. Sometimes they're the size of like a whole waterfall. Sometimes they still have water running over them, but they're just amazing. Take our breath away every time. So this is what I mean. Look at this. Unbelievable. It's like a weapon. What? I know what you mean, Jess. Good job I'm used to big weapons. Now, Jess says I'm always acting like the class clown, and I don't quite know what she means. Now, have you ever heard of the silly salmon? Let me show you. And this is what they call the reverse snow angel. <laughs> Uh, I reckon I need to grow up one day, don't I? <laughs> There's always one, but why does that one always have to be with me? How's this for service look? I've got my very own little donkey. This is how queens are meant to be treated, isn't it, Jess? It sure is. What? It's a bit deep. Well, that's a wrap and it was a blast, but I'm gonna to have to get on John's team here. Look at what's greeted us at the end. Check out this beauty snow plow. Look at the width of the tracks on it though. It's even got icicles on the front. This is a beauty, this is. 
So one of the things that surprised us the most is how lovely it is to be outside in this weather because I honestly thought I was going to be like, dash out, see the sights, get me back inside. But if you get rugged up, you get the right clothes on, it's not just pleasant to be outside, it's fun. Yeah, it? it's once you're warm, that's the thing, because when we were at the top of the mountain, we were freezing, we had to go outside, we were nearly crying. But then when we got halfway down the hill, it was absolutely brilliant. And just walking now, yeah, there's just something about the, the fresh air and snow. It's yeah, beautiful. It's just magical, it really is. And on that note, one thing that I thought was a total load of rubbish before we came here is people who say there's no such thing as bad weather, only bad clothing. But I actually believe them now. Happy New Year everybody. Happy New Year. So we haven't seen you for about a day and a half because after the toboggan we had a lovely long walk back to the car, found a park up and just chilled for the evening didn't we? And then we got up yesterday and John was a knobhead and we had a row. <laughs> <laughs> We had a bit of a tiff, right? And uh, yeah, if you live this sort of life, you have to sort of get over it quick or it's the day ruined. Mm -hmm. So which we do, we do, we get well, yeah, over it quite we've quick. We've always done that. Neither of us are sulkers. Really. Yeah, but then we went to this other place. Uh, called Alessand and it was beautiful, but everything was shut. Yeah, even the McDonald's, <laughs> which was a bit eerie. So. I haven't seen the shut McDonald's since I was a kid. But do you not want to know what the row was about anyway? Oh, I think they will, won't they? <laughs> Jess and her sleep. I tell you what, this is a constant. It drives me mad. It's a constant row in this household that sleep, but um, it doesn't sleep. I don't mind getting like six hours, like anything like that. I can function. Jess has to get eight hours mm -hmm. every day, otherwise she moans like a good one. I wish I got eight hours every day. And then she got eight hours that night, and then she pressed snooze on the alarm, so we was running late <laughs> for everything. So yeah, that's what caused the old tiff, wasn't it? But um, yes. But I think we do very well considering we live in tiny spaces and we've not had a day apart for a whole year. Yeah, so, well, like, I've been to see friends actually, I suppose. Yeah, but. apart from a couple of times we're seeing friends, but yeah, it's just if you want to live this life, you either have to get along very well or just be very patient like me anyway. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> We had a beauty little stealth park up last night, right next to all these campers for sale. But look at this caravan here. It's a beauty little one that. I've never seen one like that before with all them windows. Good old Adria, eh? Well, the good news is, John's not been too annoying this morning, so we've not had any arguments. So drive on, boy. And Jess got her eight hours sleep. I did. So one thing we haven't had on this trip so far is epic park-ups. But not because Norway's not camper-friendly, but because a lot of the places where you'd park up are chest deep in snow because they haven't ploughed them. <laughs> but one thing I would say is you don't really care though if you get the epic no. park ups in the winter and I think everywhere is a lot less, even in Scotland, nobody really seems to care if you park up in winter, eh? Yeah. Whereas in the summer, if you're right next to a beautiful scene in summer, everyone's like against you really. It's because it's so they? busy I suppose, but and I have to say this van is brilliant for just being able to park anywhere. Like we're prioritising safe and flat over beautiful. And you know what else? Jess doesn't care about getting a kit off, right? When the windows are open or anything like that. So, like, next thing is the pancakes are drooping down. <laughs> the windows are wide open. I'm like, Jess, shut the blinds. You blind everyone. Yeah, so. this is better for not blind. People, <laughs> Jess said, if I ever want to see him again, I have to apologise. Yes, he does. So they're not pancakes. Correct. They're more like spaniels ears. <laughs> He'll pay the price for his comedy. Don't you worry. I'd stare a hold in the light of this moon. My mind keeps searching, but my heart decides. Thoughts can be cruel, they're not mine to own. The space unravels when you let go. So I've just sent the comedian out to clean the windows because we're about to do the Atlantic Road, which is supposed to be one of the most amazing drives in the whole world. And we want to make sure you get as good a view as we do. Isn't it funny how you can both love and hate someone so much at the same time? What's there to hold in the light of this moon? My mind keeps searching but my heart decides Thoughts can be cruel They're not mine 
to how the space unravels when you let go. Well, that was nice, but I wish it had lasted a little bit longer. But I'm used to that kind of thing. Very good, John. Oh, we feel like that now, are we? <laughs> I always know, right, when she's up to something like that, it's because she starts giggling it to herself like a little girl. She goes, I've got a little bit. Come on, let's do a clip. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, though, it is a beautiful stretch of road, but it's really quite short. I wasn't prepared for that. So I would say, if you want to go and see it, do if you're in the area, but don't go out of your way. On that note, I did want to talk about the roads in Norway because the work that they have to do to keep this country running is unreal. And normally I am a massive Grinch about taking paint road tops. But over here, I don't mind. Yeah, well, we went through that tunnel the other day, didn't we? It was the longest tunnel in the world, uh, 25 kilometers yeah, long. Yeah, 24.5 kilometers. And somebody sent me a picture as well. They've got one over here where there's a roundabout in the middle yeah. of the tunnel. There's, I've never seen so many tunnels and bridges and ferries in my life. And like, it just works like clockwork, doesn't it? You pull up, you wait for your ferry, you drive on, you're off and like they're only half an hour and it is really well done. But if you're gonna cut them, a hot tip for you is to make sure you get an auto reader for your windscreen. Because you can do it off of a thing called auto pass, which just registers your number plate, but you pay full price that way. If you get the little thing that goes in your window, you get 20% off all tolls and 50% off loads of ferries. So it'll save you a bunch. So I've driven us three hours in the wrong direction to Dover Fjell National Park and the reason I've done that is that there's supposed to be muskox here and if you don't know they are extremely rare and endangered and they've been around since the ice age so I couldn't come to Norway and not try and see them. The only trouble is it's minus 14, it's snowing and the temperature is deteriorating fast. It's going to be minus 24 tonight. So I'm going to get out and see if I can even see where the path is. Wish me luck. Let's do this. Did I mention she's got three pairs of socks, three pairs of trousers, four tops on, a jacket, two hats and two pairs of gloves. And she'll still be cold. Well, I think I found the trailhead, but I can't actually see the trail because it's knee deep in snow and it's still snowing now. So I think we're going to have to abandon the plan. I'm absolutely gutted, but let's get back in the van before I lose a toe. Well, you know how I said the other day that there's no such thing as bad weather, only bad clothing? Well, that was a load of s***. <laughs> uh, but I'll tell you what, the weather, it's incredible how much it's changed in the last few hours. And I don't want to bang on about the weather too much because at the end of the day, we know we're coming to somewhere cold. But, like, it's really starting to kick in now that you can't mess about with these no. sort of temperatures. It's really starting to get, like... A bit Hardcore. scary, really, yeah. yeah. It's no joke, and it's only going to get worse because from here, we're heading towards the Arctic Circle. So make sure you come back next week because that's where we'll be. But first of all, boy, get me to a bakery because I need a cake to cheer me up. See you next week.